while those for March are twice the average and those for May and September are only half the average. The post incorporation period sales equals 5,40,000 minus 2,25,000. So that comes up to 3,15,000. The capital profit is to be transferred to capital reserve account and revenue profit is to be transferred to the profit and loss account of Surag Limited. Hello everyone, I am Purnima, faculty in the Department of Commerce and Management, Vidyashram First Rate College, Temple of Excellence, Mysuru. Session 2 of Unit 2. Here we will be working some more problems on profits prior to incorporation. So let us look into this problem. Tsunami Limited was incorporated on 31st August 2020 to take over a running business from 1st April 2020. The profit and loss account of the company for the year ended 31st March 21 was as follows. Now they have given us the profit and loss account here. Two salaries 25,000, director's fees 6,000, rent and rates 8,000, depreciation 18,000, interest on debentures 9,000, preliminary expenses 2,000, carriage on sales, discount allowed, interest paid to vendors, net profit carried down. Then by gross profit by transfer fees. So the total for both the sides is 1,20,000. In continuation of the problem here, the total sales for the financial year is rupees 5 lakhs 40,000 and it is ascertained that the sales for April, June and December are one and a half times the average monthly sales of the year while those for March are twice the average and those for May and September are only half the average. So you have to make a note here. So for April, June, December they are 1.5 times the average okay then for March it is two times the average and for May and September it is only half the average so ascertain profit prior to incorporation and post incorporation so after making a note of all this, we have to calculate the sales ratio. Now, we have the format here. So before just looking into the format, we will just looking into the working note here. So what does the working note tell us? The calculation of time ratio. So how do we calculate the time ratio? So we have three important dates. One is the date of purchase, the date of incorporation, the date of closing the account. So the date of purchase is 1-4-2020, date of incorporation is 31-8-2020, the date of closing account is 31-3-2021. So this is the pre-incorporation period and this is the post-incorporation period that is 5 months and 7 months. So the time ratio is 5 is to 7. So we have successfully calculated the time ratio. Now the calculation of sales ratio and now the sales for the whole year is given. What is the sales? 5,40,000. So how do you calculate the average sales for the whole year? Divide the, the sales value by 12. So we are getting 45,000. Now given in the problem the sales for the following months, they have given the sales for the following months. So for April they are telling one and a half times the average. So average is 45 into 1.5. I get 67,500. Then for May it is half, June it is 1.5, September is half, December and March. So totally 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 months there are variations in sales. So we have to make a note of that. The total sales for 6 months, so when you add all this, you are getting 3,37,500. So the sales for the remaining ones will be 2,2500. Now, next, the average sales for the remaining 6 months. So, 2,2500. You can skip this method also if you want. So, you have this April 67,500, May, June, July, August. So, total sales for the rest of the months we are getting. Now, the post incorporation period sales equals 5,40,000 minus 2,25,000. So, that comes up to 
3 lakhs 15,000. Now you have a ratio here. So when you do the ratio, you get 5 is to 7 as the ratio. Now we have the sales ratio. We also have the time ratio. Now we just calculate the problem here. So here we are writing first entry always will be the gross profit. The gross profit is given. Now what is the gross profit given here? 1,18,500. So that I will write here. 1,18,500. So you divide it in the ratio of 5 is to 7. So when I divide it, I get this number. Then share transfer fees. So that is an income to the company. So I just take it to the post incorporation period. So I get this number. Then from this, I am deducting all the expenses. So all those expenses related to sales will be divided on the basis of sales ratio and not related to sales will be divided on the basis of time ratio. Salaries, time ratio. So 25,000 I am dividing. How do I divide? So 25,000 into 5 by 12. So I get 10,417 and 14,583. Then director's fees, it will be directly charged to the company account. Rent and rates, it is time ratio. Depreciation again, time ratio. Interest on debentures, it is a direct expense. So it will be debited to company's account. Preliminary expenses also. Carriage on sales is a sales related item. So it is on the basis of sales ratio. Discount allowed also. It is always on sales. So it is sales ratio. Interest paid to vendors is a time ratio. So we have to calculate the interest from the date of acquisition of the business to the date of payment. So 2500. So 1250 and 1250. So when I add all these expenses, it comes up to 79,500. So here in the pre-incorporation period, it is 26,250 and 53,250. So I am getting a net profit of 40,500. So profit prior to incorporation is 22,917. After incorporation is 17,583. So whatever is the profit, see the capital profit will be transferred to capital reserve account and revenue profit will be start transferred to the statement of profit or loss account. So this is the working which I have already explained here. So in this, the calculation of time ratio for the interest period paid to the vendors. So it will be pre-incorporation period, it is five months. Post-incorporation, it is five months. So from September to January, so it becomes 5 is to 5 or 1 is to 1. So that is why we have divided the interest. Now let us see the next problem here. Surak Private Limited was incorporated on 1st April 2021 with an authorized capital of 50,000 shares of rupees 6 each. It took over the running business from Raga from 1st Jan 2021. The purchase consideration of 2 lakhs along with interest was satisfied on 1st July 2021 by allotting to the vendors 25,000 equity shares of fully paid and the balance was paid in cash. The trial balance as on 31st December was as follows. So they have given us the trial balance here. The share capital, freehold land, building, furniture, salaries, purchases, sales, that is pre-incorporation they have mentioned clearly. Then debtors, creditors, rent received, rent and rates, repairs, director's fees, miscellaneous expenses, interest to vendors, cash in hand, cash at bank. So this is the trial balance which they have given here. Now continuation of the problem. Prepare a statement of profit and loss of the company for the year ended and a balance sheet as on that date after taking into account the following additional information. The stock on 31st December 2021 was 69,300. Bad debts rupees 500 including 200 for pre-incorporation to be written off. Provision for doubtful debts at rupees 1000. Depreciate buildings by 5% and furniture by 10%. Now we have the format here. Now before writing the format, we have to find out the 
time ratio and also the we have to find out the sales ratio. So before uh, we should understand that in this problem they have not given us the gross profit. So first thing is we have to do the trading account. So trading account for the year is 31st March 2021. So the opening stock is not given. Purchases is given. Total sales closing stock is given. So the gross profit is 57,000. Next the sales ratio. It is clearly given that the total sales ratio is 2,27,700. So the pre-incorporation sales is 37,950. So the post-incorporation sales is 1,89,750. So it is 1 is to 5 ratio. Then we will also have to calculate the time ratio. Uh, the date of formation is 1121. Incorporation is 1421. Closing account is 12. So 3 months and 9 months that is 1 is to 3 ratio. Now we will have to just write the statement showing apportionment of profit and loss between pre and post. So the gross profit we have just calculated it is 57,000. It will be divided on the basis of sales ratio that is 1 is to 5. So 9,500, 47,500. To this we are adding the rent received. So rent received is 6,000 that is we are dividing it in the time ratio. So the total income comes up to 63,000. Here 11,000 and 52,000. Salaries are divided on the basis of time ratio. Rent and rates time ratio. Repair 750. I am dividing it as 187 and 563. Directors fees also 2,800. Directly it goes to the post incorporation. Then miscellaneous expenses is shared on the time ratio. Interest on vendors, it, it is based on the time ratio of interest on vendors. So half and half. Then bad debts, it is actually they have given. Provision for bad debts will go directly to the company account. Then provision for doubtful debts also, it goes directly to the company account. So the depreciation on buildings, it is on time ratio. Depreciation on furniture also is time ratio. So when we add all this, the total expenses comes up to 31,525 and here the expenses comes up to 7,755 and 23,770. So the net profit is 31,475. So here again from this 11,000, I am deducting 7,755. I get 3,245. And from here, if I deduct 23,770, I get 28,230. So this is the capital profit and this is the revenue profit. So whenever we are given problems like this, so the capital profit is to be transferred to capital reserve account and revenue profit is to be transferred to the profit and loss account of Surag Limited. Next, we will have to find the balance sheet. Next, we have the balance sheet here. Surak Private Limited balance sheet on 31st December 2021. So, we have the liabilities on the left side, assets on the right side. So, on the left side, I have the liabilities. The first one is the share capital of 3 lakhs. Then, we have the 40,000 equity shares of rupees 6 each. Then capital reserves. So whatever is the capital reserve, I am showing it on the liability side. Profit and loss account balance also is being shown here. The current liabilities and provisions and the creditors. Now here we have the freehold assets that is land. So building value is given. Deduct the depreciation. Write the amount in outer column. Furniture also. Write the amount in outer column. Closing stock is given. Debtors. Minus bad debts minus RBD. So write the amount in outer column. Cash in hand, cash at bank remains the same. So the total is 2,83,475. So in this way, we have to prepare the balance sheet. So all this, I have already explained the working notes here. That is the trading account and the sales ratio. I have also explained the time ratio. So with this, we come to the end of this session. Hope you have all followed it. Thank you.